1 Corinthians chapter number what? 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. All right, we're going to do an introduction, a quick introduction. Well, somebody said, well. well. We're, going, we're going to do a quick, a quick introduction, and then we're going to finish this teaching today. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Verse number 18, 12, 18. All right, let's just smile next side. Turn to the person to your left, to your right. Show them your 32s, your 22s, your 12s, your 2s, whatever you have left to work with. Everybody in the house ought to be smiling. Let's hold our Bibles up and let's do our confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am, I am what, it says I am. what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer, not just a hero. I believe the word from Genesis through Revelation. So let God be true. Every man, a woman, a liar, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. At 3.18, I need 50 minutes. How long, 50 minutes? Uh, what, what time? Give me 50 minutes. 50 minutes from, let's say 3, AB, 3, 50 minutes from 320, 4, 5, 4 o'clock I'm done, 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock AB, 4 o'clock, amen, 4 o'clock, okay, y'all ready? Verse 18, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body just as his plea. We've been talking about what is a good member, we, we talked about what is a good pastor, family, you should expect the best. How many of y'all expect the best? Yeah. Amen. You should expect the best. God going to give you his best. He sent his best, which was Jesus. So if God, if you expect the best, God expect the best. Yeah. Amen. You should want the best out of me. Yeah. Like I want the best out of you. That's what we're talking about. The Bible says God sets the members in the body of Christ as it pleases him. And we said the reason for our uh, uh, objectives for that you know without a doubt that I'm your pastor, also that you may be planted, that you may be flourished. It's important for you to be in the right place. That's why I got excited about coming across the bridge last night, because I know I'm in the right place. I know I'm in the right place. So the Bible said when you're in the right place, we ought to flourish like a palm tree in Lebanon. Amen. See, you, it's a lot of things you can plant. Let me tell you something, family. A seed will produce anywhere, but it won't produce its maximum. Just like oranges grow better where? In Florida. You can plant them in New York City. They'll grow, but not like they grow in Florida. So it's important for you to know that you're in the right place so you can flourish. Amen. See, that's why I, I want for you to know, number one, I'm your pastor. Number two, that you're in the right place because we found out you can be given in the wrong place. Amen. See, let me tell you something, family. Your God is a strategic God. He's a master strategist. So that we found out last week, reading the Deuteronomy chapter number 12, he has a place for you. And when you're in the right place, the only when, you, when you're in the right place, you got to give in the right place. Amen. It's a lot of folks are in church week in and week out, but they're not in the right place. You got to be in the right place. And when you're in the right place, you're going to flourish. Right. Are you with me? You're going to flourish. So we said that one of the things we talked about, we talked about some of the things we talked about, when you know that I'm your pastor, when you hear me, something ought to be burning in your heart. Amen. Number two, something ought to be jumping in your belly. Amen. Number three, you ought to, when people try to talk to you to go to somewhere, you say, uh, I'm going to hear Pastor Terry. Come on, family. Amen. amen, amen, amen. Then, watch this here, family. Then, let's talk about this here. Let's talk about this here. Go to uh, Romans chapter number 13. Romans chapter number what? Romans chapter number 13. Go to Romans chapter number 13 and look up at me. I'm going to finish this today. Romans chapter number 13. Now watch, in fact, before we go to Romans 13, keep your finger right there. Go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, then we're going to do Romans 13. Go to Hebrews chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter number what? Go to Hebrews chapter number 13. I got some for you today. Hebrews chapter number 13. And look at verse number 17, Hebrews 13, 17. Now, one of the things, we're going to read the scripture right now, because God said, I'm going to have to give an account for you. Yeah. You hear what I just said? Yeah. 
See, so we talked about it. Everybody look up at me. When you join a church, because we, we got babies here. This church, we got, we got people, we got people uh, uh, who, who, who bring in children who need to be taught the word. So we believe, somebody said for everything. We believe in God for everything. We believe in God for teachers. We believe in God for security. We need more than one usher. Amen. We need more than two greeters. Amen. See, even you see, Pastor Terry, I got other folks helping me teach. Look at your neighbor and say, we need help. Yeah. So when you're in the church, God has given you gifts. He has given you talents. He has given you abilities for the church. Now, we need, uh, we need more people than Monica to sing. Amen. See? But we need for you to be able to sing. Amen. Are you with me, family? So God has given you abilities. He has given you talents. He has given you gifts for the body of Christ, family. Nobody should be sitting on their gift. Are you with me? So he said, I got to give an account for you. And he said, you want me to give an account for you with joy. So look at verse 17. I'm in Hebrews 13, 17. If you're there, say amen. amen. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your what? As those who must give an account. Let the pastor do so with what? And not with what? For that would be unprofitable for you. So look at me, family. I need for you to step up and do what God called you to do. Are you with me? But let me tell you something else. Not only do God need your gifts, your talents, and your abilities, he also needs for you to give into the church. Yeah. Remember what we read last week? A couple weeks ago, he said, where a man treasure is, that's where his heart is. Wherever you put your money, that's where your heart is. You heard what I just said? See, in other words, I need for you to, number one, believe God and do what he tells you to do. Y'all got that? Now go to Romans chapter number 13. Romans chapter number what? Romans chapter number 13. Watch this here, family. Romans chapter number 13. All right, Romans chapter number 13, verse number 1. If you're there, say amen. Romans 13, 1. It's funny when these people, we, we, we such creatures of habit. You said, if you're there, say amen. People say amen, be still turning. <laughs> Romans 13, 1, if you're there, say amen. He said, let every soul be subject to the governing authority. For there is no authority except from who? For there is no authority except from who? And the authority that exists are appointed by who, family? So we talked about We talked about how you should be praying for your pastor, his family, and also those that God has raised up in this country and throughout the world that's in, in power. I told you last week that Pastor Terry, I don't have a black church. I don't have a white church. I don't have an Hispanic church. I preach the gospel. I preach the kingdom of God. Amen. Woe to me if I preach not the kingdom. Amen. Are you with me, family? Amen. See, he says, seek those things that are above, not those things that are on the earth. We got to keep our mind stayed on things that are above and not on things that are below. Are you with me? Family, he called us to be kingdom people. Are you with me? He called us to be kingdom people. Now, let's get into the new teaching. Let's get into the new teaching. Go to, um, go to Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number what? Go to Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one, verse 45. Luke chapter number one, verse 45. Luke chapter number one, verse 45. We're going to talk about, when you get it, look up, family. We're going to talk about, we're talking about what a good member is. We're talking about a good member is. One of the things we're going to talk about, God needs for you to believe him. The Bible said, in, in the book of Hebrews chapter number one, the Bible calls unbelief evil. Amen. You understand what I just said? The Bible calls unbelief what? Evil. Evil. See, he's saying, you don't believe me. So God has a track record. I told you, God has never lost a case. Never lost a what? Never lost a case. But God needs for you to do what? Believe him. TJ, come here one second. I'm going to use TJ. Come here, come here, TJ. Come here, TJ. This is my son right here. No, I said that because y'all know it. Michael might not know it. That's my son right there, Michael. 
Uh, right there, TJ. Come on, stand right there. Stand before me, TJ. TJ, stand on this side here. Y'all know every time I do an illustration, I'm always God. <laughs> always God. Now, when we left here, when we left here eight and a half years ago, I was the tallest son in the family. <laughs> and now we come back, guess who the? But now, hey, hey, but I'm still the man. Because I feed him still. I said just to hear, TJ got an 18-year track record with me. That's my daughter right there, Maddie. Raise your hand, Maddie. Come here, Maddie. Come here, Maddie. I want you. No, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Come here, Maddie. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get up. This is my daughter right here. This is my daughter right here. Now, listen to me, family. Listen to me. Listen to me. Maddie has been going to school for three years. She go to St. John. I've been paying the bill for three years. How many times your dad has been late, Maddie? Never been late. I'm talking about with a handful of people. Because I ain't looking to the handful of people. I'm looking to him. I'm telling you now, this is going to be his first year. If he, this boy eat like a, a bear. Now, one time he ran out of food. So let's say today he came up to me. Thank you, Matt. Give Matt a hand. Turn around. TJ come up to me. And he said, Daddy. Are we going to have some food to eat today? I'm like, huh? I've been feeding you for years. Family, let me tell you something. God have a problem with you. Watch this, Barbara, when you don't believe him. Amen. What if every day he was questioning me whether or not he's going to have enough food to eat? That would make me mad. Y'all know I grew up in the hood, don't you? <laughs> so he, don't, he already know he's going to have some food to eat. He already know he ain't going to go home. Why? Because he know he got a history with his daddy. Thank you, TJ. I just want them to see you today. That's all. I just want them to see you today. <laughs> Family, God has a problem when you don't believe. He never lied. He never changed his mind. He said, what's the problem with you believing me? Well, Pastor Terry, why are you saying that? Because I'm going to show you in a few minutes. We're going we're gonna to go to numbers. Your pastor's a believer. Amen. And I need people, Gary, that believe like I believe. Amen. You with me? And I'm a man. But God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man should repent. If he said he's going to do it, if he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. God needs for you to... Believe. Let me tell you why God needs for you to believe him. Number one, family, because we believe in God for the supernatural. Yes. But number two... It's seven, eight million people in New York City. They need to see the supernatural show up. Amen. Not just in my life. They need to see it in your life. And then they're going to come and tell you, they want to know about your God. They ain't asking you about your God because they don't see miracle signs and wonders. Amen. See? So what I'm telling you, the reason I'm saying this here, you, if you're going to be a member of this church, this preacher needs for you to believe. God have a problem with unbelief. Yeah, but I'm a problem with unbelief. See, watch it. Now, let's, let's look at the scripture. Luke chapter number 1, verse number what? Look at verse 45. This is, this is Elizabeth telling Mary. She said, blessed is he, blessed is she who what? Blessed is she who what? For there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from who? Come on, family. He, she said, you blessed because you what? And you are blessed because you believe. But when you, what's the, what's the reverse? If you don't believe, you are you evil. See, okay, let's keep going, family. Let's keep going because I got a lot of things I want to cover with you. Go to, uh, hmm, 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 hmm. where are we going there? Go to Mark chapter number 5. Mark chapter number 5, verse 35. Mark 5, 35. Mark 5, what? Go to Mark 5, 35. Uh, uh, Linda, help, help Mike out. He don't need any help. Look at Mike. He got his, no, they prayed the Lord. Uh, uh, I, I said, help Mike. Uh, help, uh, uh, Mike out. He don't need any help. Y'all read it? Now, this is one of my favorite scriptures right here. This is one of my favorite scriptures right here. This is a story about Jairus, right? Okay, now let's pick it up in verse 35. Jesus was the only way to heal Jairus' daughter. 535, did you dare say amen? amen. While Jesus was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is what? Yes. Your daughter is what? Yes. Why trouble the teacher of Jesus in it what? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, 
he said to Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only what? Believe. Only what? Friend, let, me, let me tell you something, friend. let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about your God. See, now Jesus is on his way. Right? Come here, Tom. I, don't, I might use half, half of the congregation today. Come here, Tom. Tom is Jairus. Get on this side right here, Tom. So he come to me and tell me to go. His daughter is sick. His daughter is having problems. Before he can get there, she's dead. Right? So we're on the way. So we're on the way, right? To Why? Jesus, the only reason he's coming, he's going to heal that girl. Let me tell you something, friend. Don't you know you got God with you? Amen. Come on, face them, Tom. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. The Bible says your body is the temple of Holy Spirit who lives. More God in, in what is it? You ain't going to have more God in 361 than you have right here today. The church is us and the believer. That's just the building. So when you ask God for something, he, watch here. Get there, it might die. If it died, I mean, God, see, sometimes, Michael, God will do a healing. Sometimes God wants a resurrection. But I don't care what he, do, I don't care what he does with you. It can be, he can do a healing or he can do a So let me tell you something. Anytime, somebody say anytime. Anytime you ask God for something, the devil going to do something to get you to see something so you can put your words on it so God can't bring to pass what you believe in him for. So before Jairus could speak, watch this, darling. Jesus said, Jairus, be quiet. Don't be afraid. Keep on. Why? Because the devil going to do something. I'm going to tell you something, Miss Helen. He's going to do something to, to make, you, make it seem like nothing working, Jeanette. You just sit there and be quiet. Why would you open your mouth and you got Jesus with you? Family, you got to know that God's with you. Yeah. And if God be for you, who can be against you? So the Bible says, watch this, watch this. You always got folks, they're good to come out, Lewis, and tell you what's, what's not working. See, they come out and tell you, say, she, she already did. You can leave him alone. No, see, we're going to go to our next scripture. We're going to uh, uh, John chapter number 11, where he told us, I am the resurrection. You got the resurrection. He said, I'm the, who, who, who believes in me should live and not die. And those that believe in me and die, going to live again. You have to recognize who you got with you. See, he told Jairus, said, Jairus, don't be unbeliever. Keep on believing. So what I'm telling you, family, you need to keep on believing. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Come on, look at that scripture again. Are y'all giving Tom a hand or Jesus a hand? Which one? Or both of them? <laughs> look, at, look at this again. Look at verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only what? Go to chapter 11. Go to John chapter number 11. Let me tell you something. What, what, what am I saying? I'm, I have a problem with folks don't believe. I have a problem with folks don't believe. Because anytime the church is supernatural. So anytime God gives me a project, it's going to be it's going, to be, it's going to take the supernatural to bring it to pass. So when I, every time this preacher walk out here and I tell you, how many of y'all know Pastor Terry don't say nothing if God ain't told me? Amen. I ain't like a lot of folks. They stand up and they prophesy. I mean prophesy. If God ain't told me something, I ain't telling you. So if I come out here and God said, if God tells me to do something, I don't need you to be in the corner talking about, yeah, Pastor Terry needs to pray about that. No, but I need for you to believe. I need for you to what? Believe. Where are we going, family? John, John chapter number 11. Watch this here. John chapter number 11, verse 39. John eleven thirty nine. When you get it, look up at me. John eleven thirty nine. John eleven thirty nine. I want you to see something. While we're in the scripture, I might share something with you. I might. Everybody look at me. This is Lazarus. Lazarus was Jesus' friend. Jesus let his friend die. What kind of friend are you? Especially when you can help me. The Bible said he let Lazarus die on purpose. Family, sometimes God will let stuff happen in your life on He let it happen on purpose. See, 
He let it happen on purpose. All of a sudden, he shows up four days later, and Martha and Mary come out and say, Jesus, if you would have been here, our brother would have been alive. And Jesus said, he's still going to live. And then a lot of us know the story. Let's go to 39, jump down for time's sake. Look at 39. And now Jesus shows up and said, take away the what? Martha, the sister of him who, who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. For he been dead how long, family? He been day, dead how long? And Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the... Look at me, family. You're never going to see the glory of God if you don't believe. Never. He said, didn't I tell you? Every time I read that scripture, I think about my sister. The way they do their hair. Didn't I... Oh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, he had an attitude. Did not I tell you if you believe, you will see the glory of God? If you don't believe, you ain't going to never see the glory. Let me tell you something, family. It's a lot of folks in our generation never see the glory of God, Miss Linda. It's some folks, Jeanette, over there in Africa, raising the dead. Folks, they don't have hospitals like we do. We don't see it in America because we ain't believing right. We got too many hospitals. We got too many Presbyterian and all these hospitals. Y'all got, y'all, y'all, y'all insurance too good. Let your insurance come down when you have to believe God to heal you. I guarantee you see more healing. See, he said, did not I tell you if you believe, you will see the... Family, if you don't believe him, you ain't gonna never see the glory. See, you ain't gonna never see the glory. Go to uh, uh, Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number what? Same story. Another story. Come on, family. You got to believe him. I want to hang out with, what if this preacher didn't believe? You don't want to hang out with nobody that don't believe. You don't want to hang out with somebody preaching something they don't. Come on, family. Watch me going. Watch it. Where, where, where are we going? Luke, Luke chapter number story by Zechariah, right? Zechariah and Elizabeth, right? Let's pick it up in verse 18. If you're there, say amen. I'm in Luke chapter 1, verse 18. If you're there, say amen. And Zechariah said to the angel, how should I know this? For I'm an old man. My wife is well advanced in years. Everybody look at me, family. God told him he's going to have a baby in nine months. And Zechariah said, how that going to happen? I'm old. She's old. How are you going to do this? See, that's what we do when God tells us he's going to do something. God, remember, I taught you this years ago. God ain't asking me to pray for the church. He asking me to believe, believe for it. He already know what my account looks like. See, he ain't asking you to pay for it. He asking you to believe for it. Zachariah said, how are you going to do this? I'm old. Watch what the messengers say to him. Watch it in verse 19. And the angel, the messenger, answered him and said, I am Gabriel. He had an attitude. Who stand in the presence of who? God. And was sent to speak to you and bring you this glad tidings, this good news. Behold, you're going to be mute, not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not, Believe. you did not what? Believe. Believe my words which will be filled in their own time. Everybody look at me, family. Now, I don't like that about God. I know he's going to do it, William. Mina, I know he's going to do it. But he takes his time, Lewis. He takes his time. He said, I know, he said you didn't believe my word, which is going to be fulfilled in their season, their appointed time. Remember, we just sung the song for a minute ago. He never early, he never late. He's an on time God. He said, he said I stand in the bare presence of God. He said, you gonna, you're not going to be able to. You'd be surprised. See, a lot of folks, the Bible said they have a form of godliness. They look like they're holy because they got a Bible. They got a cross around their neck. They got a bunch of hallelujahs in their in they vocabulary. But he said, he said, watch this here. He said, if I can shut some of them up and they won't speak because they believe, you'd be surprised how many, how many folks have been here worshiping with Monica right now. If God shut some, some folks up who didn't believe, you'd be surprised how many folks have been here and they not able to say stuff. He have a problem, family, when you don't believe. Amen. See, 
And if we're going to do some supernatural in the tri-state area, we got to believe him. Are you with me? Okay, let's go to our next case. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go to our next case. Come on, come on. Go to uh, Mark chapter number 9. Mark chapter number what? Go to Mark chapter number 9, verse 14. Mark 9, 14. Mark chapter number 9. Verse number what? Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Let me, let me, let's, let's do this here. Go back to John chapter number 11. I want to show you that. God want me to show you this for a reason. Go to Mark chapter number what? 12. I mean John 12. John 12. Go to John 12. John chapter number what? Go to John chapter number 12. We're going to pick it up in verse number 9. Verse number 9. Look up when you get it. John 12, 9. When you get it, look up. I want to tell you something. Remember we just talked about Lazarus? He said, didn't I tell you if you believe you see the glory of God? I want to show you something. I want to show you something, family. I want to show you something that has something to do with us. Has something to do with us. See, people are not going to believe until they see something. They ain't going to believe until they see something. Jesus said, Jesus, he said, you believe me because you see the miracle. And one reason why I need for you to believe with me because they ain't going to believe until they see the mirror. So he raised Lazarus from the dead. See, and I want for all of y'all to hear this. See, because a, a lot of us, we're looking for the crowd, but we don't have the, we don't have the trigger for the crowd. Or we don't have the, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the word that we, we I'm, I'm going to show you. We don't have the manifestation for the crowd. And I'm showing you how your believing can be off centered. See, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna line your, I'm gonna line your believing up today. Are y'all with me? Okay, watch this here. So Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. I'm gonna show you how powerful it is. Y'all ready? Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, Jesus. And they came not for Jesus' sake only that they may also see who? Whom he raised from the what? Okay, everybody look at me. What is our Lazarus? Our Lazarus is 361, right? For you guys don't know, everybody look at me. That's my attorney right there, right? That's my attorney. He's one going to represent us for 361. See, he said, look, look at me. He said, they ain't just come up, they ain't come to just see Jesus. They came to see Lazarus, whom we raised from the... Let's see how important it is. Let's keep reading. Look at verse 10. But the chief priests, they plotted to kill, put Lazarus to death also. Because on account of Lazarus, many of the what? Went away and believed in who? Drop down to verse 16. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things was written about him and that he had done these things to him. They had done these things to him. Verse 17. Therefore the people who were with him, therefore the people who were with him, when he raised, called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised it from the dead, they bore witness. For this reason, the people also went to meet him because they heard that he had done this what? Then the Pharisees. Therefore said among themselves, you see, you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone what, family? Everybody look at me, family. Tell me why the world went out to Jesus. Because he raised Lazarus from the... Let me tell you something, family. Don't tell, forgive what I'm going to say. He said, Tara, until you get them keys, the world ain't going to come out to you. But when we get them keys, they're going to come from the... The south, the... Hey, come and look, family. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. A lot of us, our expectation is wrong. See, I know what I'm dealing with right here. Miss Thelman, I'm dealing with the remnant. That's why I need for you guys to believe God and do what God tells you to do because he said when them keys come, you ain't going to have room to put people. He said, why? He said the whole world is going out to Jesus because he raised Lazarus from the... That's why I ain't... That's what, okay, fam. That's why I ain't, I ain't tripped out or going crazy because the room ain't, ain't packed. Because I know the resurrection ain't accomplished yet. 
But because I know he called me the last couple, he, I ain't talked to him in the last couple of years, I know he's showing up. People from the Children's Museum showing up. I know I just crossed that bridge last night. I know something. Because nothing just happens. See, see I, know, I know he's showing up for a reason. I know the folks at the Children's Museum showing up for a reason. I know I crossed that bridge for a uh, See, a lot, of, uh, a lot of you guys' expectation is wrong. Once you see the scripture, you see the right expectation. See, we're looking for something, just like a woman having a baby. And she calls somebody who didn't have one. And she said, baby, my appetite, I'm gaining weight. She looks at baby, that's, you're supposed, that's supposed to happen. Something's supposed to happen for, to you and for you. Come on, fellas, let's go to our next scripture. Come on, come on. Where I tell you to turn before? Come on, Mark chapter number 9. I just wanted to throw that in right there because we're going we're gonna to have to believe God. And a lot of other expectations are though. Mark chapter number? Nine. Verse 14, 9, 14. 9 what? 14. Watch this here, family. Watch this here. All we got to do is believe. Remember we read last week? About, we read it last week in mm -hmm, Genesis chapter number 11, verse 6. The Bible, the God said they had one language, they had one speech, and they was one people. And he said nothing they imagined, nothing that they purpose going to be withheld from them. That's why I need for you to believe. Come on, family. How many of y'all believe God is real? Okay, look here. Mark chapter number what? 914. If you're there, say amen. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, the scribe disputing with them. And immediately when he saw him, all the people greatly amazed, running to him and greeted him. And they asked the scribe, what are you discussing with them, his disciples? And one in the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought my son who has a mute spirit. And whenever it sees him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and become rigid. So I spoke to your disciples. They should cast it out, but they could not. And the answer said, you old faithless generation, you are an unbelieving generation. How long should I be with you? How long should I bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought him to Jesus. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. He fell on the ground, wild and foaming. See, he's trying, he trying to make Jesus. Let me tell you something, family. I don't have, I'm thinking, let me see, I don't have nobody here I can use this illustration with. If I call, let's say I call somebody up here, and they, and a, you ever seen, anybody ever seen somebody had a Caesar? A seizure? They fall out, start foaming. See, it would freak a lot of y'all out. It freaked them out because there was a demon in it. But Jesus did this just looked at it because Jesus knew what it was. It's a lot of things freaking you out. You should just be able to look at it and say, are you with me? But because you're walking by sight and not by faith, it's tricking you, it's tripping you out. See, so Jesus looked at it. Come on, let's continue the story. Let's continue the story. Watch this here, family. What verse I'm in? What, what verse? 20. 20. And they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. He fell on the ground, wild and foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long this foolishness has been going on? And he said, from a childhood. And often had thrown him into both the fire and into the water. To do what? Destroy him. But if you can do anything, Jesus, have compassion on us and what? Look at verse 23. And Jesus said to him, if you can what? If you can what? If you can what? All things are possible to those who what? Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my, <coughs> help my what? That's why you got to come to church, family. Amen. Every time you come to church, I guarantee you, your belief will be strengthened. You got to come. He said, God, I believe, but help my what? But what Jesus said in verse 23, he said, all things are possible to those that believe. You got to be a believer. Come on, go to, watch the family. Let's finish this off. Go to Numbers chapter number 11. Numbers chapter 11. Numbers. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Come on. Numbers chapter what? Go to Numbers chapter number 11. Numbers chapter number 11, verse 16. Numbers 11, 16. When you get it, look up. Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. When you get it, look up at me. See, he said, all things are possible to those that believe. 
Now, let me show you something. This scripture I'm going to read right now. Because the Bible says if we can believe together, if we can say the same thing, believe the same thing, be one people, nothing that we imagine is going to stop us. Are you with me? So I want, I'm re, he had me to read this scripture for a certain reason. Because he said, Terry, I'm going to take the spirit that's on you, I'm going I'm to put on your people. That's why you got to be careful who you set up under. Because he said the anointing flows from the head down. What's on me going to get on you? It's some people, you don't want certain things on you. Amen. How many of y'all heard what I just said? Yeah. Let me tell you something, family. All of us growing up, grow up, we say, I ain't going to be like my mama. And guess who you turn out to be like? <laughs> I ain't going to be like my dad. And then you look back and go, Lord, I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> See, because of the influence they had on you. So watch the scripture right here. Watch the scripture in verse 16. I'm in Numbers 11, 16. If you're there, say amen. amen. Look what it says, family. So the Lord said to Moses, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them to the tabernacle of me, that they may stand there with you, Moses, with you, Pastor Terry, then I will come down and talk with you there. I'm going to talk with you what? Yeah. See, that's place. I will take the spirit that's on you, Pastor Terry, and would put it on what, family? And I will put it on what? I will put the same upon them, and that they should bear the burden of the people with you, that you may not bear it yourself what? Look at me, family. He said, I'm going to take the same spirit that's on you, and I'm going to put it on your people. See, that's why you have no reason for not to believe. You have no reason for not to believe. Because this preacher's a believer. And I'm looking for you to believe. I'm looking for you to believe. Why? Because God has raised us up for such a time as this. Are you with me, family? He raised us up for such a time as this. Come on, family. We ain't got but a few more minutes, and we're finished. Go to, go to Acts chapter number 17. I got about three more scriptures. We finished. Acts chapter number what? Go to Acts chapter number 17. So we're looking for you to believe. Acts chapter number 17. Acts chapter number 17. Verse number 11. Acts 17, 11. Acts 17, 11. Now, let me, let me say this here. See, it, it, I know what God is up to because I have revelation. I have insight. It, it burdened me to see people come in here with kids and them kids not go to the children ministry because the parents should be able to focus on the word and not have distraction. But I know what season we're in right now. Are you with me? Somebody say help yeah. is on the way. Amen. Let me tell you how you know it helped on the way. A lot of y'all prayed me back. Yeah. You, just, you just didn't know I was in the process. Amen. But help is on the way. Can I get you to be true for today? Can I be true? To, can y'all be true for me? Remember, you remember growing up, we used to curse. Did we get to the church? We quit curse, pass the church, and pick up our cursing again. Watch this here, Barbara. Watch this here. Can I get you to be true? Now you're in church now. Look at your name. Say you're in church. How many of y'all know when I left here nine years ago, y'all never thought you'd see me again? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay, raise your hand. Raise your hand how they can see it. Okay, now put your hand down. How many of y'all know when I left nine years ago, you'll see me again? Raise your hand. All y'all prophets, y'all knew that? Some of these folks lying raising their hands. Huh? Okay, because we're friends. Let me tell you something. Well, I, I'm going to leave that alone. See, when that email came to get me back to New York City, this is what the email said, Pastor Terry, I know you have moved on. Mm -hmm. See, because it looked like I had moved on. Now, Miss Nunda knew, because she told me, Miss Nunda said, she said she was going to a church. And she said, they said, how come you don't join? She said, because I'm visiting. They said, where well, your pastor at? You told you, your pastor's on, on assignment. She never joined a church because she told them her pastor's on a son. It appeared that I was gone. I thought I was gone. That's why I thought God was going to do something in Georgia to make me forget New York City, not knowing that it was the next step. 
See, now watch this here, family. I'm going to show you something. A.B., I got two scriptures. Thank you. I got you. Thank you, Adrian. Amen. Thank you, Adrian. Verse, verse 11. Look at verse 11. If you dare say amen. He said, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. That they received the word with what? Come on, I'm in, I'm in Acts chapter 17, verse number 11. Y'all read it? These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. That they received the word with all what? They searched the scripture daily to find out whether these things were what? Everybody look at me. I need for you to search the scripture. I need for you to study the word. See, look what he said right here. He said, they received the word with all readiness, and they searched the scripture daily to find out what Paul and Silent was really true. In other words, even though I'm a teacher, and y'all believe that I'm a teacher, y'all know I'm a teacher, I need for you to study. I need for you to know the word yourself. You heard what I just said? But most people don't study. Most people study. He said, 2 Timothy 2.15, come on. Study to show yourself approved unto God being a workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hey, family, he said they searched the scripture daily. daily. See, let me tell you I knew how I knew I grew up. I heard preachers on television preaching stuff. I said, that ain't true because God had taught me the scripture. I heard one of my mentors say something the other day. I said, that ain't. Then my wife started elbowing me, staring, don't do that. Family. I need for you to, you need to know God for yourself. Most people only know God based through their pastor. Uh Uh-uh, you ain't here to know God through me. You want to know God on a one-one basis for your. And you ain't going to know if you don't spend time with him. You have to spend time with him. See, and he said, hey, wait, he said, watch this, watch this. All my people in Georgia, God gave me about 50, 75 people in Georgia who believed in this preacher. I ain't talking to you. I ain't talking to the people in Georgia, right? Go set the people. He said, but the people in New York City, when I preach the gospel, it's a different hunger that y'all have. Because y'all receive the word with all readiness. Y'all like, bring it on, preacher. Why? Because I'm in my place. But I need for you to study. He said, now he said, these people here, they had the second greatest man in the New Testament is, is, is Paul. They search the scripture to make sure what Paul and Silas lined up with the scripture. Are you with me? Okay, one more scripture. We're done here. So I need for you to study. Go to Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number what? Hebrews chapter number 10, and we finish. Hebrews chapter number... Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 25. Hebrews 10.25. If you dare say amen. Hebrews 10.25. Y'all ready? Hebrews 10.25. If you dare say amen. amen. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Come on. Together. One more time. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. What family? As is the man of some. But exhorting one another so much more as you see the day what? What is that scripture saying? Everybody look at me. Can we finish? I'm going to say something. We're done. Everybody look up. He's saying, I need for you to come to church. I need for you to come to what? I need for you to come to church. He said, don't forsake the similar of ourselves together as the man of some. How many of y'all look? Let me tell you something. I grew up. I grew up. And the number one reason why people join the church, anybody tell me the number one reason? Because of the pastor. What's the number one reason why people join church? So when you tell people on your job at home in your neighborhood, you say, you ought to hear my. So when you bring them to church, who are you looking for them to see? But if somebody else comes to you, like, oh, my God, where's Pastor Terry? How many of y'all been like that in churches? I, be, I was going to churches, and Lisa, watch this here, Tamika. Linda, you know the truth. The pastor was out every other week. I'm like, what kind of mess is this? I wasn't even born again. I was going to church when Linda wasn't even born again. That's why I know folks going to church and some of them ain't born again. And he will have every other week somebody else will preach it. When you bring people to church, you want for them to hear your what? How many of y'all like me disappointed when the man of God don't get up and speak on Sunday when he's supposed to? How many of y'all raise your hand? 
Watch this, fam. Put your hands down. Watch it. Oh, y'all ain't, y'all ain't just going with our preacher. <laughs> look at me, fam. Look at me. The same way you disappointed when I don't show up, I'm disappointed when you don't show up. I am. People come to me all the time, unless you got a, a, a legitimate reason. Todd is not one of them. I just drove 14 hours. And I know you work, because I don't, I, don't I don't want people uh, in my member of the church don't work. <laughs> Amen. Look at me, family. The same way you're looking for me, I'm looking for you. Amen. Now, people come to me all the time. They have legitimate reasons. They're on vacation. I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about staycation. <laughs> I'm talking about vacation. London Baptist. Y'all remember when we used to go on vacation, I still would find a church out of the day. We got to go to church. Yep. That's before I mature. Now I take them on vacation. We don't have to go to church. I just give them a word in, in right there in the living room. I give them a word on the beach or something. Look at me, family. If you in town, I'm looking for you. A legitimate reason? You on vacation, out of town? You in the hospital? Give me some other legitimate reason. So somebody's a dead. <laughs> I want to hear somebody say, dead. <laughs> I had a member, look at me, family. I had a member two weeks ago came here and laid down on some, on some chairs. It's some, let me tell you something. That's no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, no condemnation. But I'm looking, let me tell you something, family. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm talking to everybody right now. If you come to church, every, I'm going I'm to say something that's going to help you. See, you can't come every six months at once a year. No. You can't come on Resurrection Sunday. No. If you come to church, I'm looking for you like you're looking for me. Let me tell you something, family. He sent me to help you. Amen. And I'm going to help you. Amen. I'm going to help you in your marriages. I'm going to help you with your kids. I'm going to help you with your finances. I'm going to help you with your health. I'm going he- to help you with your enemies. But you've got to come to church. See, and somebody say everything. That's what my training been about. See, since I'm back now, we I ain't talking about immediately, but we're going to start setting up stuff. What do you mean setting up stuff? So that married people can get together. Amen. So singles can get together. Amen. Amen. We're going to get together for teenagers to get together. We're going to we're gonna have a, a financial seminar. This is just at the beginning, baby. But I need for you to show it. Let me tell you why I need to show it. It's a critical moment right now. Amen. The Bible says, don't despise the days of small, small beginnings. It's important for you to show up now. Yeah. Because I showed you when God raised up Lazarus 361, the crowd coming. Amen. See, when the crowd coming, I don't need, see, I need for you to show up because you're going to help the crowd come. Yeah. Pastor Terry, why do you need me to show up? Because God told me years ago, he said, Terry, you just need to outlast the devil. Because when God told me that was my church, come on, family, that was my, now he can raise up a remnant. Of people. I'm looking at the remnant. Everybody I see in here today is the remnant I need for you to show up. Until that thing break. And when that thing break, I, I promise you with everything in my hand lifted up, family, you're going to get everything you need to win with. When I say everything, I mean, see, we got a house. I'm going to talk to Linda. We're going to bring married folks out. I ain't bringing all y'all to my house. <laughs> but I'm going to be here for you. Because I'm here now. We're going to meet somewhere at Whole Foods. We're going to meet. See, because I want for you to win. But watch this here, family. I need for you to show up. I don't need for you to watch me. Some folks watching me on streaming right here in New York City. Your tail ought to be here in church. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I need for you to... That's just like you showing up, and then I play a video of a message I did. I don't want to hear no message on you, Pastor. I want you, I want you, the Bible says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I, hey, family, look at me. I know you're tired. A lot of y'all work. And then I know 2 o'clock is a, it's an odd time. See, I have to take a, no, no, no. I, y'all see y'all love it. No, 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 baby. Pastor believe for 9 to 10 o'clock. The devil is alive. This is temporary. Because around 2 o'clock, you start... That's why I, even I got to take a nap before I come. 
Hey, hey, look at me, family. Just a critical moment right now. Yeah. Things are getting ready to break in our life. Yeah. Things are getting ready to break in our life. And I need for you to show up now. I need for you to show up when? Now. If you're in town, I need for you to show up. I need for you to show up now. I need for you to show up. It's critical right now. See, he said, don't forsake this. It's similar by itself as the man of son. If you show up everything, you, I'm going to say something going to help you. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something to help you. Are you with me? Yeah. See, watch this here, fam. Watch this here. You can close your Bible because I'm done. I'm closing, but I don't, I'm not going to say that. You can close your Bible. I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. Close your Bible and look up at me. But you got to show up. See, faithfulness is the key. What's key? Faithfulness. See, I need for you to show up because God, he, he, he sent me here for you, and we got work to do. See, and this preacher, if I'm the only reason I won't show up, I'm out of town. But I'm going to be here on Sunday. Even when he opened the door for me to preach other places, I'm going to be back here for my people. Amen. Are you with me? Because you're looking for me, Stephanie, I'm looking for you. Amen. And people come up to me all the time. They, tell, they say, Pastor Terry, I ain't going to be here today. I'm with my family reunion and so-and-so, so in North Carolina. I'm not going to be here today because I'm on vacation in Hawaii. I'm like, let me go with you. I mean, Amen. take me and my family with you to Hawaii. But family, come on now. Come on. You need help? Help us here. Help us here. Me and my wife, we're going to set up different things. See, I told you, it's pain me to see people hurting and not get what they need. But you got to be patient with us. Patient with us. Are you with me? You got to be patient. See, everything you need is on the way. It's on the way. Give the Lord a hand, praise. Mm -hmm. It's on the way. It's on the way. Just like the house we're moving in, it's a nice house. But I thought my wife should have been moving back in her dream house. But God opened that door, and I'm grateful for it. When I came back to New York City, I thought I should have been in my church. Here I'm having church at, at 2 o'clock, but I know it's God. How many, we, how many Sundays I didn't miss? You better believe it. Zero. I'm going to be faithful until the next door.